Uh, the reality is that Africa has been tremendously blessed with a lot of natural resources. Um, so when I, when I hear that question, I can think of two things. One is the fortunate situation that Africa has with a number of large natural resources. But the second part, which is the more difficult part, is that Africa cannot, African countries, don't seem to be able to exploit the natural resources by themselves directly. So that's why you see there is always, always a rush from big investors, big companies, and big countries to try to get into the game and try to invest and work in Africa. So really it's one, because of the tremendous amount of reserves and natural resources that are available, but two, a little bit sad, because of the lack of the expertise and lack of financial resources to be able to go in and act uh, directly to um, manage and fructify this, in these opportunities. Um, renewable energy is a big movement. It, is, it makes sense. It is cleaner. It is more efficient. It is becoming a lot less expensive. But at the same time, you can walk and chew gum. Africa has been, again, blessed with these natural resources. There is a lots of natural resources, lots of oil. You gotta still be able to take advantage of those and try to do it in a very clean way. And those represent big, big opportunities for the country, for the continent, and for countries within the continent. So there is no way countries should be abandoning this massive, massive potential they have in natural resources. At the same time, they should not, and they cannot, turn a blind eye in the opportunity that renewable energy represents for the continent. And the continent, again, is very well placed to actually take the best and make the best out of the renewables. If we talk about solar, if we talk about wind, Africa is, can be a very, very prime place for these uh, projects and these industries to actually get to know the best day on Earth. So, you gotta do both. Cannot be at all. And we have to be able to take advantage of the natural resources that are available, but also looking into the future, try to develop strategies and you know, possibilities to make renewable much more cost effective because it is cleaner, it will be better for the continent. But for now, let's keep pushing and I think we'll take a lot of advantage and use the opportunities that are presented in natural, natural resources. Uh, some people have coined and talked about it as the energy curse. We have lots of petroleum, lots of natural resources. How come Africa is this underdeveloped? How come Africa is this poor? Number of reasons. I will not be able to enumerate all, but let me try to take a crack at one or two of them. One is we have to look at ourselves first. African countries and African governments rush into these agreements, rush into these transactions and into these dealings with a number of investors without necessarily understanding what they're signing onto, what they are giving up, what they are getting for it. So on the one hand, we have to look at ourselves and make sure that we can really take advantage of what is ours. And when I say ours, I mean Africa and African countries. So that's on the one hand, and that has not been the case. Historically has not, and to this day, even though things seem to have been changing in some countries, I think it's still fair to say it's mostly not the case. We can, and this is what I try to do by working with the SLP and trying to speak to policymakers to try to give a little bit of pointers of how they can go about dealing with the biggest tax challenges that are posed today. Uh, but that's only one side of the coin, because that will lead to hopefully more revenues for these governments and these political authorities and these countries. The other side of the coin is what do you do with that? And that is the biggest question that needs to be answered. And I'm gonna disappoint you I have one answer, but I do not have the answer. The answer belongs to the people who manage those revenues. The answer belongs to the people who actually get what, is, what comes from this project. The answer belongs to them, and they have to really look at their people in the eyes and tell them where the revenues from these natural resources and these projects have gone all these years. Um, then the fact that we don't necessarily have a lot of democracy in the continent where people are not responsive to or government officials are not responsive to their, uh, to their citizens, it doesn't help because there is no accountability and they don't feel like they have to explain anything. They do whatever they want mostly and they're not held accountable for it. So I will keep um, 
for me at least, trying to do what I can on the area of trying to show how to deal with the most pressing tax issues in the world today to make sure that African countries are prepared and have the expertise to be able to get into negotiating tables and negotiating good deals. But the other side of the coin, I'm afraid there isn't much uh, I can do and the people who need to do something about it, they have to step up and do something about it. No. Each of us has to do their jobs. My job when I'm at my, in my office is to represent my clients and I try to do that in the best way possible. And, and most lawyers you will talk to defend the interests of their clients. So if you have been elected in a country and you have been entrusted to make laws to try to protect whatever belongs to the country, then you have to do your job. And part of doing your job is to making sure that the laws that are in the books are actually for the interests of your people, not necessarily because you're getting a private benefit from negotiating with X instead of Y, you can totally forget about. about. But it, again, it comes back to the basic question of accountability and democracy. If people can rise and ask questions of their leaders, there will be a review of those laws. Those laws are in the books, and they need to be reviewed, and they have to be reviewed. But that would not be the job of somebody like me. And I think people need to, to step up and do their jobs. And I feel uh, more democratization of the continent and the countries will actually go a long way in making sure that, really frankly, stupid laws uh, are, not, are not available anymore. Expertise costs money. You have to know what you have. And when we talk about it, the natural resources, there is a lot within the continent. African countries have a lot of natural resources. When you understand what you have in terms of wealth, then you should not be afraid to pay a consultant, to pay an expert, to come in and make sure that your position is maximized. So what I would tell our leaders if I were to meet one of them, and what I would always tell them when I do meet some of them, is please make sure you get expertise. Listen to your technocrat. Walk with your technocrats and listen to your technocrats. And then you will get better results. And the biggest impediment they usually say is, it is too expensive. Well, to that I always say, you get to pay for it one way or another. Either you pay for it and you bring people in to get better deals, or you don't bring them in and you end up in a worse position. So you always end up paying for it. So you should pay for it in a way that maximizes your own interests and the interests of your people. And listen to your technocrats, bring them in, and make sure they are up front, because they know what is going on, they know what is. When we talk about Zambia, mines, it's been years, ten, tens and ten, tens of years, lots of years that Zambia has been doing this. Zambia should have a panel of engineers, of lawyers, of able to afford them without any complaints. And being able to, these people are the ones that are the forefront of negotiation in these agreements and concessions for mining and petroleum. And when you do that, then you get better deals and you get a better stake. And the state actually gets to claim a better share of whatever is plotted from, the, from its territory. And then, again, the other side, side of the coin is, what do you do with that? Even if you get a better, what do you do with that? Let's go back to democracy and make our leaders accountable. The African Union has been doing a great job at trying to bring some of the governments um, up to speed. International tax is changing so quickly. Um, even in the West, I live in the US for example, it is constantly that we are reviewing our laws and reviewing what is going on and reviewing how we can better make sure that the state and the government can respond to the private sector and the private industries. And it is, when we look at the developing countries and we look at African countries specifically, it is heartbreaking how far behind we are. So the fact that the African Union has taken an initiative to try to bring these governments and these institutions up to plate has been a wonderful initiative. Again, let's make sure the politicians listen to the technocrats and then that we can actually get results.